Welcome to Thrilling Experiments. Hello, I'm Tony Thrill Hill. <laughs> and I hope you're as energetic as I am today. Because we're going to be doing some really, really thrilling experiments on energy. <laughs> energy is the ability to do work. Work involves a change in position or movement. Any object that moves or changes position is working. There are five types of energy. Mechanical, heat, chemical, electromagnetic, and nuclear. The oil in the diesel is a form of chemical energy. The bulldozer is a form of mechanical energy. One of the first scientists to work with energy was Albert Einstein. In his studies, he came up with a formula. You may have heard of the theory of relativity, right? Oh, you know, E equals mc squared. Energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. In his revolutionary theory, Einstein stated that mass, m, and energy, e, are interchangeable. He said that mass is a form of energy, and even more, that a little mass is equal to a lot of energy. His theory also followed the law of conservation of energy. And everyone knows what the law of conservation of energy says, right? The law of conservation of energy states that energy can be changed from one form to another, but cannot be created or destroyed. This is happening all around you. Look in your house. Electrical energy to heat your house is a form of electromagnetic energy, and the light energy inside your toaster, which toasts your bread, is a form of heat energy. Today, we're going to be focusing on two forms of mechanical energy, potential and kinetic. Potential energy is the energy stored within an object that is not in motion, but has the ability to be. Potential energy is converted into kinetic energy when the object begins to move or work. Potential energy is known as stored energy, while kinetic energy is known as energy of motion. Always have an adult present when doing experiments and always have your safety goggles available at all times when you're in the laboratory. Here she comes now, June Sefuentes. Hello, Tony, how are you? I'm just fine, thank you very much. I'm energized to start our experiments. What's the first thing we're gonna do? The first thing we are going to work with are the basics of energy. Kinetic energy can also increase the temperature of an object which we are going to see in our experiment using chocolate milk. Sounds cool. Here's our volunteer. Hi, what's your name? I'm Chris. Okay, here's what you're going to do. Take the temperature of chocolate milk. Hey, it's about 50 degrees. Next, fill the blender with chocolate milk. Place the lid on the blender. Blend on the highest speed for five minutes. Now, take another temperature reading. Wow, I can feel it's already warmer. Is there any difference? Yes, there is. The temperature of the milk has increased from 50 degrees to 115 degrees. The action of the blender increased the chocolate milk's kinetic energy. It was the increase in that energy that raised its temperature. Right, June? Yes, that's right. Thanks for your help. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Let's move on to our next experiment. It deals with potential energy. Everything has potential energy stored in it. The task is releasing it so that the energy can be used as kinetic energy. In this experiment, we are going to release the potential energy of a peanut, turning it into kinetic energy so it can heat up water. This sounds cool! This is getting better and better every single minute. What do we do now, June? First, Carefully push the eye of the needle into the end of the cork. Then push the pointed end of the needle into a shelled peanut. If you push too hard, the peanut will break. It helps to hold the peanut at an angle. All right, I have my needle through the cork and peanut. Using the hammer, take the nail and punch holes around the bottom of the large can. Sort of like a chimney, right? Yeah, exactly like a chimney. This will help focus the heat. Next, remove the top end of the small can. Using the hammer and nail, punch two holes near the top opposite each other. Now slide the barbecue skewer through the holes on the small can.
Fill the can about half full with water. Let the water sit so that it is at room temperature. Take the thermometer and take a reading. All right, I have the temperature of the water, 68 degrees. What's the next step? Place the cork and peanut on a non-flammable surface like tin foil. Take the matches or lighter and light the peanut. Have an adult help you. All right, I'm about ready to light the peanut. Once you have the peanut lit, immediately place the large can over the peanut. Then take the small can with the skewer through it and balance it on the large can. Allow the peanut to burn until it goes out. As soon as it goes out, take a reading on the thermometer. The temperature has gone up. Now it's at 75 degrees. We burned the peanut and released its potential energy. It was then converted to kinetic energy, or heat energy, which in turn heated up the water. Very good, Tony. I bet you didn't know a peanut had all that energy. <laughs> no, I didn't, June. That was a cool experiment. I don't want to stop experimenting. What's next? Well, in our next thrilling experiment, I thought we could calculate kinetic energy. In order to do so, we need to know the equation. It is kinetic energy, Ke, equals 0.5 times mass times velocity squared. In this experiment, mass is the weight of the object and velocity is the distance the object travels divided by the time it takes to get from point A to point B. So, we can calculate the kinetic energy it takes me to run around this room. We could, but we need to get to the experiment. And look, here are our volunteers. Hi, I'm Frankie. Hi, I'm Ashanta. Thanks for helping today. Now, what are we going to do with all these things, June? We are going to find out the kinetic energy that each ball has by rolling them down a ramp. Ashanta, you are going to roll the balls. And Frankie, you are going to record the times. You need to calculate the time it takes the basketball to get to the end of the ramp. Next, place the basketball on the ramp and let it go. Use the stopwatch for this. 2.71. You may need to do this several times to get an average time. You need to repeat these steps with each ball. 3.04. Oh, kinetic energy equals one-half times mass times velocity squared. Exactly. We are going to demonstrate how to calculate the kinetic energy of the basketball. You might want to perform your own equations for the other two balls. The formulas are the same. Before we can insert the data into our equation, we need to calculate the velocity. Velocity is distance divided by time. The distance is the length of the ramp which is one meter. The time is the average number of seconds you recorded on your trials. For our equation, the basketball took 2.71 seconds to roll down the ramp. Take the distance, one meter, and divide it by the time, 2.71 seconds. The velocity for our basketball is 0.37 meters per second. For mass, we are going to use the weight of each ball in grams. Now it is important to note that weight is not the same as mass. Mass is actually the density of an object times its volume, or the area it takes up. But because mass is very difficult to calculate, we are going to use weight instead. The basketball weighs 590 grams. You need to repeat these steps with each ball. And the tennis ball weighs 56.4 grams. The golf ball only weighs 45.5 grams. We have the mass for each ball. So, we're ready to figure the kinetic energy of the basketball. The mass of the basketball is 590 grams. We have determined the velocity to be 0.37 meters per second. Don't forget to square the velocity. That becomes 0.137. Now, take our mass of 590 grams and multiply it times 0.137.
our product is 80.83. One half, or 0.5 times this amount, will give us 40.42 newton meters, the kinetic energy of the basketball. Now, with the same data from this experiment, you can figure out the potential energy too. The equation for potential energy is PE equals mass times gravity times height. The masses are the same. Gravity is always 9.8 meters per second per second. The height is the height of our ramp. Correct, Tony. Let's find the potential energy of the basketball. The mass was 590 grams. Gravity, as you said, is 9.8 meters per second per second. The height of our ramp is 0 0.10 meters. Multiply 9.8 times 0 0.10 and we come up with 0.98. Now multiply 590 times 0.98 and we have our potential energy of 578.2. In our next experiment, we will use a pendulum to illustrate the law of conservation of energy. First, tie the string around the egg. Use the sticky tape to make sure the egg is securely attached to the string. Next, connect the string to a ring stand or similar support. Make sure that the egg will clear the surface of the table as it swings. The idea is to allow the egg to swing freely without any obstruction. Now you need to correctly position your experiment. Place the pendulum near the wall. Adjust this distance to a point where the string holding the egg is nearly horizontal when extended to the wall. What do you think will happen when the pendulum is released? That's the thrilling part. Will the pendulum swing away from the wall and then come back and smash into the wall? Haha, <laughs> we're about to find out. But I've convinced June to make our version of this experiment just a little bit more elaborate. That's certainly no exaggeration. Instead of an egg, we are going to use a bowling ball. I wouldn't recommend you trying this version of the experiment at school or home. However, the principle is the same. Tony, will you set this experiment up? I'll explain a little bit about potential and kinetic energy. When the pendulum is pulled up against the wall, the egg isn't moving, so it is in maximum potential energy. Once the pendulum is released into motion, its potential energy is quickly converted into kinetic energy, but not all at once. You see, the pendulum has different amounts of potential and kinetic energy throughout its entire swing. These different amounts of energy always add up the original amount of energy the pendulum started with. Hey, that's the law of conservation of energy. There is always the same amount of energy which cannot be destroyed or created, just converted. Okay, I'm ready to conduct our experiment. I still like the idea of using an egg, so I put one up on the wall just at the point of our pendulum's impact. All right, let's bring our pendulum right up to the edge of the egg. We'll see if the bowling ball will smash the egg on its return swing. Anytime you're ready, Tony. Here goes. Whoa, that was cool. And no damage to our brave little egg. When the pendulum is at its highest point after it's released, it actually stops for a short amount of time. It isn't in motion there. So the kinetic energy is converted back into potential energy for that time. You got it. That is one of my favorite experiments. I like to see the excitement when students try out the pendulum. They always think it's going to return all the way back. But you see, there is no way the pendulum could have hit the wall because, according to the law, energy cannot be created or destroyed, only changed in form. That was a real cool experiment. Well. That's all we have for today. What a great way to end the show. I agree. Now remember, energy is the most important concept of physical science. Even though the concept of energy is relatively new to science, it is a major part of our modern world. People, places, and things all have energy, but we observe only the effects of energy when something is happening. The next time you're outside or with a group, Observe the forms of energy around you and how they're converted into the different types of energy. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks, June, for the expert advice. You got it, Tony. I really enjoyed myself today. See you later. See you later. Bye.
just like the one on my grandfather's clock. Exactly. <laughs> huh? Energy! Yay! <laughs> Thanks for the help.